God has something special for us, and He has a special way of making it known unto us. And today, I want to talk about whom do you say that I am? It's a question of Christ posed before Peter. And I hope you have the Bibles with you. And if you do, I ask that you return to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. This is the first the first gospel is where the word church shows up at. The Bible here, Matthew 16, and he told him, upon this rock, I Peter, I should build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail. That's the first time that word was used to speak about his church. It was mentioned in the Old Testament. Sometimes you hear people say the storehouse is the church in the Old Testament. The storehouse is not the church. The church didn't exist after the day of Pentecost, the book of Acts, and they were in the upper room, they were filled with the Holy Spirit was the beginning of the church. And this, this ties into that. But here, I want you to go to Matthew 16. I want to begin reading at verse 15 through 17. This is my target. It says this. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ where Christ will be the anointed one, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah. Bar is Aramaic for the word son, and Jonah is the name of his father. So he says, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Saints, it's very important for you to understand this. God the Father does not draw you, you can't come to Christ. Hello? And I want, to, I want you to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of John next. Chapter 6. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You didn't go to a Bible study and find this out. You didn't get a verse of scripture you read and it was made available to you. He said, but my Father, which is in heaven, and made this known to me. Yeah. And whom the Father make known to Christ receives, and those who receive are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's spoken of in Ephesians 1 and 13. So, here in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, go to verse 44. It reads as follows, it says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day, referring to the resurrection. Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Okay? He asked his disciples, Peter in particular, who do you say that I am? You say you're Christ. We ask a lot of church people who Christ is and give a bunch of answers, but there's some things that separate us from other beliefs and religions, and it's their view on Christ. There are many religions that say they believe in Jesus Christ, yet their views are not according to the Bible. For example, if you ask the Muslims, they will tell you that Jesus Christ is a good man, he was a prophet. He yes, asked the Mormons that tell you Jesus Christ is a spiritual brother of Satan and the devil. He yes, asked the Jehovah Witnesses, they will tell you that Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel, which is a created being. What they want to establish to you early, so you won't get lost in this, Jesus Christ was fully man and fully God. Not 50-50, 100-100. In the passage when Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am today? I ask you, who do you say that he is? If you believe that Jesus Christ is just a good man, but not God in the flesh, your belief is not in agreement with the Bible. If, if you don't believe in his physical resurrection, as the Jehovah Witnesses don't, they say it's a spiritual resurrection, don't even sound right, because they kill a, a, flesh, a body with flesh, can't kill a spear with spear and nails and a crown of thorns, can you? So if they don't, if they deny his resurrection, they deny salvation. 
Because when they say, if you confess with your mouth and believe your lips that Jesus died for sin, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But if you don't believe that he was raised from the dead, then you worship in vain. If that tomb was still occupied, where, where would our resurrection be? But Christ is alive, and he's alive forevermore. He who was, is, and is to come. Amen. And he's not a God of beginnings, he's a God that makes beginnings. He didn't have a start, it was not begotten, it was not a beginning for him. The Son of God existed in the very beginning of the Word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning. All things were made by him, for without him was not anything made that was made. You go down to verse 14 in the same chapter, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, or tabernacle, or lived among us. And we hear that word, Emmanuel, God with who? Us. Why does God want to be with us? Because He loves us. And He want to have a relationship, but He can't leave us the way we are, because the way you are, you can't fellowship with Him. Because you have to be holy. In order for you to be holy, you need to have the Holy Spirit living inside you. They said, Jesus is just a prophet. He's a, a good man. But he's not the son of God. I heard a Muslim, one of my co-workers, tell me that. He said, I love Jesus. I said, the, the Jesus you love is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible, we're going to talk about him. Jesus of the Bible existed with God the Father before the world was. Open your Bibles to Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 5. Some people seem to think that before Jesus Christ was born in a manger with flesh on him, that he didn't exist. I'm here to let you know that's incorrect. Christ was born in a manger, but that was not his beginning. The Son of God existed with the Father before the world was. The reason why Christ had to be born in the flesh and he had to be made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of the death. For without no shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. So in order for Christ to die, he has to take on a body that can die. And so in his natural state, he could not die. So he had to be made a little lower than the angels. Because angels don't die from physical death. They only can die spiritually. Hello? Here in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, this is Christ's longest prayer in the entire Bible. Chapter 17, verse 5. It says this, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Before it was a world. He wanted to go back home, but he had an assignment. See, at home, they weren't spitting on him. They weren't trying to, 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 to beat him up. They weren't trying to, to deny him. They worshiped him. The angels said, three times holy is the Lord. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, is, and is to come. A God of past, present, and future. There's never a time where he didn't exist. Amen. Some people seem to think this Mary's baby, he only had a beginning in a manger, but before he was manifested in the flesh, he existed with the Father. Yes. When the Bible says, and let us make men in our image, angels can't create. It's only an attribute that God has and he doesn't share it. Yeah. He doesn't give it to you. Yeah. He can give you love, he can give you mercy, he can give you kindness, but you can't create something. Hello? You can't speak nothing into existence. But you have some denominations to tell you, you can, I'm telling you, you're lying. Uh, you know how you can prove it? Tell them to speak something into existence that never existed. Wow. Since you're so good. Yeah. Just make something up that we ain't never saw before. All they're doing is duplicate what is already here. If you create something, you put something in the atmosphere on the earth that didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. He said, let there be light. There was light. It was light before. Yeah. Was it? No. So when you hear people tell you that, you, you know, proceed with caution. Now here he says, with the glory that I had with you before the world was. This is Jesus.
Jesus that the world loves is not the Jesus of the Bible. He's not just a prophet, a priest, and a king. He is God in the flesh. All power is in his hands. He suffered the death of the cross for the sins of the world, and he was resurrected from the dead with a physical body, not an invisible body, not a spiritual body. Jesus Christ had was seen by over 500 people after his resurrection. Over 500 people witnessed Christ after his resurrection. The Jesus of the Bible exists with God the Father, just showed you before the world was, John 17 and 5. And Jesus of the Bible was born of a virgin, according to the Bible. Yet there are some that call themselves believers and they deny the virgin birth. Get this as a believer, you can have a few flaws. And you can misinterpret some scriptures. And you can be totally wrong about some scriptures. But most of the brothers will be telling you about tithing and stuff. They're wrong. Hello? Amen. Most of them tell you if you don't speak in tongues, you may say it's not Bible. That's denomination. This is Christ was born of the seed of a woman. Genesis 3 and 15. And that woman was married. But what's unique about saying that the woman, the woman don't usually carry the seed, it's a man. But since Mary didn't know a man, she had to be, he had to be born of a virgin who had never known a man. And guess how that occurred by way of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hello? Way of the Holy Spirit. Now you hear some people say the Virgin Mary, and they still want to call Mary a virgin. Certain denominations, Catholic Church in particular, uh, Mary's not a virgin no more. She had other children. Once a person has children, you don't keep calling them virgin, do you? It's a thing that the Catholic Church practices, and it's a belief that's called Immaculate Conception. Immaculate Conception is not the belief that the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary. It's the belief that Mary was without sin, like, like being like God. But the Bible tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. And guess what? Mary was in need of a Savior just like we were. If she was without sin, she wouldn't need a Savior. But since she had sinned, she needed a Savior. And look at your neighbor and say, just like me. Just like me. Mary was a tool used of God, and that's what she was. She's not the queen of heaven. <laughs> Look at the name said she's not the queen of heaven. <laughs> and you know we don't have no sympathy for the devil, and he's also not the king of hell. He's going to be down there weeping and, and, and gnashing of teeth just like the rest of us. Okay? Let's do this. Let's read a little here. It says this. When you say that Christ is Lord, we say this according to the Bible. If we believe that Jesus is something other than and what the authority of the word of God teaches us, our belief is not in the Jesus of the Bible. And it's important for you as believers to read your Bible. Amen. I remember when I was younger, I'm 60 years old now. But when I was young, in the 70s, I remember when the VCRs came out, I used to go to a lot of people's house visiting and stuff. And I noticed they would have a big old VCR on the top of their television, and the lights would be flashing off and off. And I was like, what's that all about? They said, well, I don't mind programming. <laughs> I'm going, some people obviously got a big old Bible on Psalms 23. The page is yellow there. The rest of the Bible, you open up, the pages are white. But they leave it there. They don't know how to work it. They don't know how to use it. And if you don't know how to use this Bible, you won't know who the Lord is. Hello? And you won't know his desires for you. And you won't know what to stay away from and what to take in. And you also will be an easy prey for the enemy. You know, it's true that the shepherd keeps you. But if you don't know the word, you're going to run into a lot of things that you could avoid. So you should have this as a way of your lifestyle. That you read the Bible every single day of your life. So you get up and drink coffee every day of your life. Is coffee more important than the Word of God? Or your juice or your breakfast? This Word must be living inside of you. You need to get thirsty for it. Because if you become powerful in this Word, the devil can't keep tricking you. You can't keep going for that stuff you went for in 79, 89, 90. If he's going to fool you, tell him he's going to break something new this way. Because I didn't grow up, so what? I've been reading the Bible. 
with understanding. Amen. And you know how you learn about the Bible? By coming to Sunday school and, and Bible study and stuff. Me, just this 11 o'clock service. You can't ask a bunch of questions at 11 o'clock service, can you? In Sunday school and Bible study, we ask questions. And they get answers. And it's not that complex. This is what you say here. It says this. The question is posed to Peter. Whom do you say I am? Before you answer this question, because I'm going to pose it to you, let me tell you what Jesus is not. One thing that I like to do is give illustrations. One is of, of what is and what is not. And sometimes give me giving you an illustration of what is not helps you see what is. And here I want you to see what Jesus is not. He is not Santa Claus. He is not a bit rich, quick scheme. He is not under your authority. You can't tell him what to do. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't tell him what to do. <laughs> he is not a just man. He, he, he's not just a man. He, he, he is not dead. He is not a figment of my imagination. He is not Michael the Archangel. He is not weak. He is not unaware. He is not a part-time God. He's not a liar. He is not a God of only a certain race of people. I see some brothers, they got a black God. They're telling me I've been misled. I've been brainwashed. That the Bible has been changed. You ever hear people tell you that? They say, well, it was good, and then a man corrupted it, so this is what I do to put him on blast. And you can do this when you see them rappers. You can ask them. What translation was corrupted? What year did it occur in? Guess what? They never know. Because they make that up. Okay, what, which translation? When was it good? Let's go back and read that one and see if they said what you said. But they don't have one because it don't exist. Don't let people just keep feeding you anything about the Lord. You're supposed to defend the faith. You are ambassadors of Christ. You are extension of the gospel. Look at your name and say, you run up on me with that foolishness, you might get your feelings hurt. You know, the Bible hurts people's feelings sometimes. When you tell people what you're doing is sinful, some people, they know their feelings is hurt by it. But if what they can tell you may hurt your feelings but lead you back into fellowship, you should be saying thank you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Christ is, is not some God, some black God, or only a white God. Or he a God of all nations, all tongues, and all kindreds. This gospel is colorless. Yes. And it's for anyone. He said, whosoever will. Yes. Whosoever will. Who, whoever he draw can come unto salvation. I just told you what Jesus isn't. Now I'm going to tell you what he is according to the Bible, according to the word of God. He is our hope. You know what hope is? Expectation of something good coming. Christ is our hope. We hope in him. He is, he is our refuge. How many, how many of y'all ever need refuge before? Yes. He is the bishop of our souls. He is the forgiver of our sin. The giver of eternal life. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the present help in times of trouble. He is more than enough. He is forever faithful. He's the bright morning star. He's Jehovah, Rapha, the God, the healer. He's a good shepherd that laid down his life for his sheep. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, he is. He's living waters. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. Yes. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. That's who he is. He's Mary's baby. He's the way out of nowhere. He's the King of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. Mighty in battle. He's the truth. He's the way. He's the life. Yes. Yeah. He's the Prince of Peace. He is the great I Am. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's infallible. Yes, he, is. he is Lord. Yes, he is. All by himself. Yes, There's no counsel that can concede against him. He is mighty. He is bad. He is awesome. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And his kingdom has no end. Hallelujah. His riches, his wealth are in abundance. He's a God of more than enough. 
He said, well, not just to save you, but to sustain you and to keep you, to lead and guide you, to protect you, to feed you, to cover you, to heal you, to wake you up in the morning, to provide safety in your travels. Who do you say I am? Some say you're a way maker. Yes, yeah, some say you're the keeper of my soul. Some call him the lion of the tribe of Judah. Some call him the seed of Jesse, Abraham's seed. Yes, Jesus, I'm talking about, he had to be born in Bethlehem, Micah 5 and 2. He had to be betrayed by one of his own and sold for 30 pieces of silver in Zechariah 11, verse 12. If you look in the Bible, you see clearly that Judas betrayed Christ for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. You forsake the Messiah for silver. Some of us are forsaken for much less. I was listening to a, a sermon as Paul was, was called Watch the Dogs. He said a dog is more faithful than we are. He said, you can go before your dog. Your dog can be hungry. You have no food, broke, no money, and he will wag his tail when he see you and lick your hand when you put it before him. He was standing in the rain with you. And they even said when some people die sometimes, they dogs go to their grave site and just sit there and howl. Faith. If a dog can be like that towards a man, how can you be less towards God? When they say, who do you say I am? Who do you say? What has he done for you? Simon says, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits towards me? For all the good that he done me, or, or, or what about this one? When he said, but this I know that thou favors me, 41 and 11 Psalm. This I know that thou favors me because my enemies don't try them over me. You won't let them, they try to eat of my flesh, but they stumble and fail. We can they endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. My God is a God of joy in the morning. My suffering is temporary. The Bible says anything that you can see is temporary, but the things of God are eternal, but they're unseen, but they're everlasting. Yes. You got a God that loves you with an everlasting love, even in your foolishness, He still loves you. Yes. He still will keep you. Yes. Turn your Bible to John 17 again, verse 23. I don't want to keep you long. But it's clear, it should be very clear that Jesus is who you say He is. Yes, the Passover Lamb. Offered up for the sins of the world. Number with the transgressors. When they say Christ was number with the transgressors, they put it between two thieves. One of those thieves, boy, did he get a brain dead. All he said was, Lord, remember me. And he get to be in heaven. The king of glory. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? This Jesus Christ that we love, he was before his accusers when they took him before Pontius Pilate. He kept silent. Yes. How do you keep silent when people lie on you? Yeah. I still got issues with that. You know, I'm, I, I used to be violent. I'd be like, hey, better quit lying on me or something will happen to you. But I'm a church boy now. But you know when people lie on you, you'd be one to say something to engage him. But he kept his peace. You know why? Because he knew what his assignments are. When you know what your purpose is, you hold your peace. Because you want to fulfill your purpose. You do the will of God. It's not your will. His will has to be done in your life. Then he told him, he said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. I don't need a permission slip from you. Pontius Pilate, Herod. I'm a guy. I'm in control. I'm willing to give myself up that they may have life. Jesus. I'm willing to die unless a seed fall to the ground and die. It can't produce. Come on. Yes. Christ gave himself up that you may have life. Yes. And the abundant life. Yes. You ask, who is he? He is the keeper of your soul. Yes. Yes. The forgiver of your sin. Yes. And he has given you a purpose in life. Your purpose is to glorify him. I want you to see how much love he has for you. I wear this verse of scripture out. 
I don't, I don't know how many times I read through the Gospel of John it's in the Hermes. And this verse right here, I read over, I mean, time and time again, one day it just opened my heart to it. It says this, verse 23, 17, 23 says, I am them, and thou and me. Remember I told you this Christ the longest prayer in the Bible. He can really take this cup of his sin. He, he is something unfamiliar. He hasn't tasted this before. He goes on to say that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know that thou has sent me and has loved them, referring to believers, as thou has loved me. Yes. Christ is telling you that God the Father loved you the same as he loved him. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to this. He who knew no sin, the just died for the unjust. Him. The creator of heaven and earth offered himself up as a ransom that you may be reconciled to the Father. Don't you ever forget who Jesus is. Don't you ever deny him because he says if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father. Some people think they say they act like they say, they walk like they say, but if you follow them, you find out they not say. The Bible says you know a tree by the fruit it bears. Some people say, don't you judge this and that. The Bible said, with the same judgment you put out, you shall receive. If I'm judging by the word of God, that's what I'm getting back. I'm willing a chance. Hello? It's not, you, you judge every day. Don't ever forsake the Lord. Don't ever break your fellowship. Don't ever stray away and leave yourself open to attack the enemy. Yes. You get beat up enough, don't you? <laughs> don't you? Don't you want to win? Yes. Don't you want to fight to win, not fight just to fight? Come on. I like winning. Yes. If you're on my team, you, you got to expect to win. Yes. And if you're on the team of the Lord, you got to expect to win because that's the team I'm on. Yes. Hello? Amen. And if God be for me, Great is he that sent me, that he that's in the world. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us from them all. Yeah. All sickness, all sorrows, all suffering. You know what that means? We win. Yeah. Let me close out. I'm, I'm in the zone. I would be derelict in my duties as a shepherd not to have a call um, just for salvation. But I told you, God, the Father has to draw you. And once you do, Christ receives you and the Holy Spirit seals you. I pray on today, and I'm going to just talk to about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning today. Pray. I'm praying that the fruit of my house If you don't know who the Lord is, you just have to be told might just came to church just by chance. You want to receive the Lord in your heart? Come. You want to confess that Jesus is Lord? Come. He's a way maker, a healer, forgiver of sins. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are new. I like new stuff. How many like me raise your hand? Y'all still in your sleep? I don't know what y'all were doing last night, but it's <laughs> showing. <laughs> Next thing I, I want to offer is this. If you are in a believer, if you're a believer, and you don't have a church home, it's like having a house without walls. You need a deep pinch. You need a place to be nurtured, cared for, a place where you pray and fellowship with other believers, to be like-minded. It's hard to be like-minded when you're by yourself, isn't it? Because you don't know what my mind is. That's why God, he's a God of relationships. I told you, if you look at the Ten Commandments, the first four is man relationship with God, but the next six is man relationship with man. God said, where I am that you may be also. I go to prepare a place for you. So it's important for you to be in fellowship with other believers. You know what that means? You got to be more forgiving. You got to be a little more kinder. You got to be more loving. Yeah. You got to have more compassion. You got to be willing to serve and not look to get served. I told you, humility comes with this. Yes. 
Humility is taking on the mind of a servant. You're looking to do something that God may be glorified and that another need might be met. The doors of the church are open. That's who we are. That's what we're about. If you need a church home, desire to be. The doors of the church are open. Salvation is of the Lord. God draw you unto salvation. Come. If you need me to come to you, I will. If you want to come to the fellowship, you have a church home with you. If you don't feel comfortable walking by yourself, I'll come to you. These leaders that will come to you.